just to be serious for a minute, one of the things that somebody asked me in an interview the other day what I'm proudest of about having done a thousand shows, I think they were wondering, you know, if it would be a certain guest or a, or, or a certain thing. I said, Oprah had a vision that was a completely new genre of television because nobody had done this before. And I'm not saying that because I do it. Yeah. It's just nobody had done it. And what has happened over the last now going on 11 years, five years on your show and six years here, is I think because of what you saw and started, we have opened up a dialogue about mental health in America that wasn't there before. People wouldn't talk about things that were, you know, trouble in their marriage, child abuse, the things that so many people suffer from. And by coming on your show with your credibility and dealing with those subject matters with dignity and respect, I think we opened up a dialogue. Well, I in saw America. that change actually, Phil, after about the first year you were on the show. Because as I said, the the initial reaction to you wasn't so good. People were taken aback by you being so straightforward and tell it like it is. And I said to my producers, I can fix that by going on the air and saying to, to our audience that that's who he is. He's going to tell you like it is the same way he told me, being straight. And now we live in a world where people want to be told, uh, you know, straightforwardly. And so what I noticed after about a year, not even a year, after three, four times you were on, it changed and people were writing in saying, please tell Dr. Phil I would like him to tell me like it is. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And so it went from, I don't like that guy, what's he so abrasive, why is he saying those things, to I now think I need to take a look at myself and want him to help me take a, to, to, to do that for me. And then I knew that everybody else was going to be, you know, trying to imitate it. But there's only one. Yeah. Well. There's only <laughs> one. My favorite all-time moment with Phil, and out of all the years that we did shows, five years, was a woman who had lost her daughter. Joanne Compton, if yes. you remember. Yeah. I didn't remember her name, but I remember her face. I remember her demeanor. I could cry thinking about her. And that moment solidified for me exactly what my goal is in television in that moment with her, because she had uh, been mourning the loss of her daughter for so many years, oh. over 10 years. I remember you saying, do you want to celebrate the, you want to continue celebrating the moment she was murdered, or do you want to celebrate the 18 years? She and lived. she then said, you know, I never thought of it that way before. I could cry thinking about it. She lived for 18 vibrant and wonderful years, and you focus on the day that she died. I never thought of it that way. And you just said to me um, during the commercial break, you said I was going to leave here with a plan. Yeah. And now you've changed your plan. What was the plan? <sighs> I thought after I would made this goal that now I could go home. <sighs> I'm sorry. I was going to go home and take my life. <sighs> Because I wanted so bad to reach this goal, and I felt like once I reached it, I could just let go. And I didn't know how to let go without just going away. But now you've changed your oh, mind. Oh, yes, I've changed my mind. And that moment is exactly what I strive for in television and had been striving for, to use this platform to create a moment for the viewer to, that has never thought of it that way before. When she said that, the hairs rose on my head. Yeah, and you, I could you, see the hairs rise on yours, yes. and that's hard. Well, there were only two. <laughs> there were only two. <laughs> Oprah's best friend, Gail King, is here today. And now, say hey, Gail. Congratulations. Congratulations. Now, oh, now, that's TV Jakes. That's Pastor Jakes. Yeah. Yeah. Hi, Pastor Jakes. That's Bishop T.D. Jakes Hi. right behind Gail. Yeah. Bishop T.D. Jakes. Uh -huh. Now, Gail watches every show. Is that right, every Gail? Every show. Well, I have you and myself and Grey's Anatomy on TiVo. Basically, when I watch you is when Gail calls me and says, oh, you got to see Field today. <laughs> You should see what Phil and T.D. Jakes did down in Gina. And then they're doing a second Gina show. And let me tell you, she emails me all the time. I'll see it pop up. 
and I never know what it's going to be. It's going to either be, oh, I just thought you were great today, that person, or why did you let him get away with that? Are you kidding me? No, I say it's a comment from the peanut gallery. No, this is think, true. Congratulations. This is, this is true. Uh, recently, she emailed you, and this is what Gail will do. She will email you and then not tell me until after she's emailed you because she knows I will tell her not to email you to stay out of Phil's business. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so but most recently, she sent me an email after she sent it to you, and I said, why did you do that? She said, because if I'd have told you before, you'd have said, don't do it. <laughs> yeah. So anyway. We get along fine, don't we, Gail? Yes, we do. We yes, go back we and do. forth all the time. Yeah. Talk yeah. We're homies, Phil. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> We're homies. Yeah, we, yeah. we are homies. I have one last question for you. Do you realize how much you've changed my life and my family's life? I mean, do you really get, really get that? Well, I uh, will have to say that uh, during uh, the holidays, I got an email from Robin, because Robin is the, the connector, is the great yeah. connector. And Robin said, we're thinking about you, and our whole family was around the table, and we were talking about you, your ears must be burning, and we, I just wanted to say thank you. And from time to time, Robin sends me those kinds of emails, and so I, I kind of get a sense that things changed a lot. Well, they've, they've, I've watched my family grow up in this situation, and we've just been, it's been 10 years. I mean, as you said, this is our 10-year anniversary. It's our anniversary. <laughs> Well, Oprah, there's been a thousand shows I've done where I've thanked my guests for being on this show, but I've never said thank you more heartfelt than I say to you for being here today. Thank you for thank being you. Being the Phil that you are. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Coming up, whatever happened to Marty, Aaron, and the Dr. Phil family? Find out next. Coming next Tuesday. This is Dr. Phil House, day two, and just hit the fan. He's very abusive. See, now that's a lie. I say, get me mozzarella cheese fries. He brought uh -huh. me back mozzarella sticks. It ain't about cheese fries. Did he cheat on you? When I was pregnant. After jail, I stopped cheating on her. Have you guys ever cheated? And the biggest challenge yet. You guys did nothing but cheat, man. Okay. Stephanie, what a spoiled brat. Oh, my God. Dr. Phil's Rules of Engagement, next Tuesday. Welcome back to Dr. Phil's 1,000th Show Celebration. Huge breaking news across this great country of ours and here in New York City. Dr. Phil has made a house call for the thousandth time. Congratulations, buddy. Absolutely, congrats. Now you can see you get along much better. Congratulations, Dr. Phil, on 1,000 episodes from all of us at Wheel of Fortune. Here now are some of our most memorable guests. Welcome to the world, little guy. Hi, Dr. Phil. Thanks to all the viewers. We really appreciate all your care and support. Thanks. <laughs> <Nathan. laughs> Jeez. Jeez. And thank you, Dr. Phil, what you've done for me personally and my family. Can I have a little kiss? No. I just need a little one. Congratulations, Dr. Phil. Happy 1,000 show. Congratulations, Dr. Phil, on your 1,000 show. Woo! Yay! Hi, Dr. Phil. 